Uh, good evening. My name is Debbie Jacobs and greetings from uh, Alexandria, uh, Virginia, where it is raining today. It's been a pretty rainy day. Uh, pretty yucky out. Um, anyway, I just thought I would do a, a live. Actually, I haven't been on YouTube uh, for a few weeks, but I wanted to just, um, you know, post something to share uh, my experience and, and to give hope to other people living in mental illness. You know, my name is Debbie Jacobs, and um, I actually, for most of my adult life, I lived with depression, anxiety, and bipolar. And let me tell you something, that's no way to go through life at all. You know, it's just like, uh, it really negatively affected the quality of my life. And even though I had a great life, having these negative thoughts like tearing me apart and, and putting me down and, and, you know, undermining my own enjoyment and happiness made everything a lose. You know, um, I had difficulty in relationships. I was really insecure, like really insecure. I didn't have effective coping skills, you know? And I also was very unlovable, you know? Like I would always think, oh, what are they gonna love about me, you know? No one's gonna like me, you know? And I perpetuated that thinking, you know, for years, for years, you know? And I always struggled with, with the relationships. Um, and, uh, and I never accomplished love. You know, a lot of people with mental illness do accomplish love, but then there are a lot that, that did, that, that don't, you know, and I fell on the don't side and I said, you know what? Like, um, I really wanted to accomplish love and happiness in my lifetime, you know, in my uh, experience, I didn't want to go. I don't know. I don't know why, you know, but like it really just, I know why actually, because my dad was amazing, even though he was, you know, too hard on me, uh, you know, and, and in his hurt self, his ego self, uh, my dad gave me a great life, a great life. We grew up wealthy and and he was generous and i traveled and we had these vacations and i had nice things i i wore louis vuitton and i really had like a lot of nice things but i had negative thoughts and ineffective coping skills going on you know in my head from abuse you cannot hit a child when they are in the developmental uh, stage uh, you know phase of their life you know, I mean, that's like a little like flower is, is budding and growing, you know, into a plant. And as soon as you see it rising, you start hitting it. You know, you can't hit a child. I can't believe that. I can't believe that people, you know, have hitting as a tool for parenting. No, let me tell you something. You know, one person out of mental illness says that, that you know, uh, parenting needs to be changed. It needs to be changed. And that actually is, uh, you know, my my goal, my mission, to help people get get uh, you know off track to mental illness, and stay on the path of happiness, their authentic self, you know, stay off track of suicide and self harm, um, you know, so that they addiction, so that they can you know live it you know uh, in uh, effective. I'm sorry, with effective coping skills to make good choices for themselves. Not want to, uh, you know, numb their pain with drugs or, um, or, 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 or cutting, you know, uh, or, 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 or end it by suicide, you know. Um, and let me tell you something. Do I think that kids need to change? No, kids don't need to change. Parents need to, need to change. Parents need to change. They need to have positive thoughts and healthy self-esteem like the beautiful, authentic self, which, is, which I accomplished through my healing process. Um, I created a process and I created an app that reprograms the subconscious mind. And let me tell you something. In my deep hurt and pain, you know, I went through a very difficult time. Um, and let me tell you something. Bipolar, depression, anxiety did not help me. Didn't help me get through it. It actually made it a million times worse, and I myself was very close to suicide. Very close to suicide. 
uh, you know, like really in a very, very, very bad place. Uh, and it actually got me to, to work on healing my pain rather than ending my life. And I said, you know what, if this doesn't work, I'm ending my life, you know, but I'm going to, I'm going to try and fix it first. You know, I had lost my father, so I, I inherited uh, all this money. I lost my job, so I, you know, I wasn't working, and I focused on my own healing. And it took me five years. I spent $300,000, but I accomplished the spiritual awakening, the awakening of my beautiful, authentic self, the self that I was meant to be. Um, and, and the process of awakening, you know, the beautiful, authentic self, uh, you know, uh, requires the death of the ego self. I had to kill my hurt self, which was the bipolar depression and anxiety, and all my flaws and all the negativity, I had to get rid of all of that, and then learn new ways of being that, that stem from a positive place, not a negative place. Our hurt stems from you know, from negativity. So in our hurt, we're operating from a negative perspective. And that creates hurt, you know, uh, hurt people, hurt people. But when you're healed and you've learned, you know, uh, positivity in the foundation of your being, not negativity from hurt, uh, you know, then, then you're creating happiness and you're living with positive thoughts and healthy self-esteem. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, really, it was very, very challenging uh, to accomplish. Like, I was committed, determined. I was like, I am, you know, not going to let anything stand in my way. Not even me, you know, because let me tell you something. You know what was getting in my way? Being insecure, being angry, uh, having anxiety, uh, you know, um, not, not feeling confident in, in my um, communication skills, uh, not being an effective listener. You know, I had all these, these coping skills and ways of being that didn't serve me. Being a self-sabotager, my inner critic, having abandonment issues and trust issues, and a, an inferiority complex, I had a lot of flaws that stemmed from my hurt. You know, my dad never taught me to... Um, you know, go in the store and feel inferior to anyone. You know, like you have to undo the the uh, the mistakes that were done. You know, my dad never taught me to have anxiety. Anxiety is a reactionary response that was developed through repetition and consistency, because my dad was a scary guy, and my and you know, like kids, kids are. You know, people think that, that, that they're like, you know, going to have all the coping skills, you know, that everybody else does, but they don't. So for a kid, you know, when you scare a kid, that makes them scared. Hello, then they're going to have fear for life, you know. Um, so basically, you know, you have to get rid of all those flaws, all those negative, ineffective coping skills that are ingrained into the foundation of our being have to come out. That's what took me five years, $300,000. Of course, I am working on a, on a process where I hope to shorten it to a year. But even if it's a year or two, it's still better than living the rest of your life in negative thoughts and low self-esteem. Because basically what I'm doing is I am undoing all of your conditioning over the course of your development. And I am literally reprogramming not only your mind, but you, you know, to your beautiful, authentic self coming from a positive perspective. And once you, you know, you accomplish that win, win, you, you know, you have, um, a new, a new you. you, you have your authentic, you, the beautiful, authentic self. And let me tell you something. It is a million times better than having negative thoughts in your head. Like the, and not only that, but it really is authentic to yourself. This is me. This is Debbie Jacobs. You know, um, me and my ego self in my pain, I always felt like there was an essence of me, but that, I, but, but my pain actually would, would be, you know, um, I led by my pain. So people would be like, Oh, Debbie, yeah, she's, she's really insecure, you know, or if I went out, I would feel insecure and people would see my, my insecurity. Or if I was at work, I didn't get my way. I would get angry. People would see my anger, you know, so my anger would be blocking my essence, you know? and healing to, to my beautiful, authentic self. It's like my whole being 
is my essence. This is me. This is Debbie Jacobs. You know, and I'm going to tell you that, let me tell you something. In my healing process, I'm like, well, I'm going to be the most charismatic, you know, uh, the most um, charming, outgoing, you know, really kind. And so I was going to, you know, I wanted to like, because basically what you're doing is you're learning a whole new, uh, all new coping skills and, and learning all new behaviors. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to be the, the perfect person, which of course is, you know, perfectionism is ego. And that getting out of uh, out of perfectionism is amazing. It's like that that's really freedom and happiness. But anyway, everything that I tried to do that wasn't authentically me didn't work. I mean, I really tried. I really tried. You know, I mean, I I would Google. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would use Google uh, to. Um, research coping skills and I would buy books and stuff and I would educate myself, you know, how do charming people, you know, uh, uh, operate, you know, I try, I tried that, but it didn't work for me. I am just myself. This is it. And this is who I've always been my entire life, minus my flaws. And now you don't see my flaws because I healed them. That's, that really is, is, is what mental illness is. It's our flaws that overwhelm our being. I mean, I had bipolar rage for sure, you know what I mean? And it really did, you know, drive me, uh, you know, to want to kill someone and kill myself, you know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, so um, that's all real. But you know why I had anger? Because I never was properly taught how to manage my anger. And I never was properly taught how to maintain my boundaries. And I had people trampling my boundaries left and right. I had anger, not because I was mentally ill, but because it was warranted. And I didn't have, a, you know, effective coping skills to deal with it. You know, I have, a I have anxiety, not because, uh, you know, I'm mentally ill, but because it was warranted. I learned it. You know what I mean? It was reactionary. It was part of my experience that created the anxiety within me. Not mental illness, you know. And let me tell you something. I am one person, but I believe that, all, that, that uh, you can heal yourself out of your mental illness. And that's why I post and make these videos. My problem is that nobody is listening to me. Isn't that terrible? Here I am claiming to have the cure for mental illness uh, and, and, and to avoid it in kids. And nobody is listening to me because I'm a, I'm a positive thinker now. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm not getting through to the ego self, the negative thinker. No matter how positive they get, they, you know, they're still in their ego self. So, um, you yeah, know, but I do, I, do, I do post these videos because I hope that Somebody will see it and, and it will resonate with them and they'll contact me and, 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 and want to go through the healing process, you know, because let me tell you something. I mean, at first, of course, I thought, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm going to help so many people. I'm going to make a lot of money, you know, and then I have like nobody contacting me and that's even worse. But is that worse for me or is that worse for people in their negative thoughts? You know, it actually is worse for people in their negative thoughts. And I don't want people to stay in their negative thoughts. I actually want people to heal and live in their freedom and happiness. And you know what? Another thing, you know, people with depression and mental illness tend to not have funds to support, you know, um, their own well-being uh, because they're living on, on disability or they're not, you know, they're, they're um, on, you know, they don't have the, the, the funds for it. So basically, um, I also do uh, offer support even if you can't afford it. Because you know what? Let me tell you something. You know what's more important? It's more important that you have your that you get out of your negative thoughts and have your freedom and happiness. And and I I am willing to work with anyone just to accomplish that because I don't want people definitely not to live in their mental illness and uh, you know definitely not to live in in their pain, in their negative thoughts and pass it down to their kids. So, all right, my name is Debbie Jacobs. I hope you have a good, a good uh, uh, evening, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye. Take care.